Hey there, everybody. Franklin Taggart here, and it is time for the virtual coffee break. I left my coffee in the other room, but my family is on the way home from the restaurant with food, and they're going to be noisy when they come in, so I just wanted to go ahead and get the video done before the noise happens. So here's, here's where we're going today. Um, I just did a TikTok video about a, a client of mine that has, has gotten really frustrated about trying to be visible in too many places at once. And she just feels like that she's constantly either on her phone or on a computer um, doing something that's, you know, promotional or uh, marketing oriented or anything like that. And so one of the things that we had to talk about was where is the most important place for you to show up instead of looking at everywhere all the time? Um, she had gotten that advice from a social media course that she had taken. Now that social media course was done a few years ago and it may have been much more possible and feasible for a person to be active on all of the platforms back then. But that was before there were a dozen options on every platform and it was before there were, you know, three or four new platforms that, that had to be integrated into that. So the advice that she got maybe wasn't bad advice, but it just wasn't, wasn't timely. And so what we ended up talking about was, you know, where are the places where you have the most fruitful connections with people? Where are the places that you can go in and um, either have the best kinds of conversations, get the most interaction? You know, where are you seeing the best results? And as she found those places, we were able to say, okay, what, you know, based on the results that you're getting in these spots, what do you think would be the best strategy for, for recreating that same condition over and over and over again? Now, this isn't always easy to do. <clears throat> Something that works one day may very well not land the next. We all have had that experience. And algorithms tend to be, in some cases, unpredictable as to what content they're going to, you know, favor. What they tend to con what they tend to favor is the type of interaction that you get. And everybody's tried to figure out all of the different ways that that can be played. I still think that the best way to play it is to put your best content out there, um, post it with some you know, with some frequency, but you don't have to be everywhere all the time, every day to be, you know, to be as visible as you need to be. Um, an example that I can use from my own experience is, uh, I used to try to post on Facebook every day. And when I first started on Twitter, I tried to post with similar frequency, probably more along the lines of a few times a week. And what I found is that posting really didn't, didn't generate the kinds of interactions and connections that I needed or wanted. So I had to kind of take a step back and find out where is it, first of all, where is it that I have the, the easiest access to the people that I want to work with? And, you know, for me, um, I've talked about it. <clears throat> I like working with creative people. I like working uh, with people who ha have maybe set aside a creative dream for a really long time and they're ready to kind of dust it off and get it out in the open again. Well, you know, some of the, t some of the groups that I started hanging out in were groups where people were, you know, thinking about a career transition or people who were thinking about retirement or people who are, you know, looking for things to do in their spare time to make a little bit of extra money. And as I started to, to hang out in those groups, I was able to start to have conversations with people about very practical things that they could do to, to move in that direction. Now, these were the groundwork. These, these connections were the groundwork for what became very fruitful client relationships. But it didn't happen overnight, and it wasn't a magic pill kind of a post where I would, you know, tweak my image or, you know, get my message exactly right. It was, it was being responsive to people in a meaningful way and in a practical way um, to, to meet a, a specific need that they were expressing. That, to me, 
was being in the right place at the right time. Now, the hard thing with that is that it's not necessarily easy to scale. The wonderful thing, though, about posting in groups on Facebook especially, is that those posts stay up for a long time and they're searchable. So if people are doing searches in Facebook groups on topics like, you know, how do I, how do I come to a place where I actually like marketing instead of hating it? Um, I can't tell you how many times that I've, I've responded to people who have said, you know, I love my business, but I hate marketing. And one of the things that I kind of scratch my head and say, how can you love your business and hate marketing? Because I don't see the two things as separate. But in any case, those are the kinds of posts that I look out for. And I go into those posts and I say, you know, what are the hard parts here? What are the things that are, you know, what are the things that are difficult? And what have you tried that's worked? And let's, let's look at that. But it's like, I can, I can get into conversations in those places that are, that are exactly the people that I want to work with and that are exactly the, the kinds of first contacts that I want to have. And I, I tried for years to make posting do that for me and posting in my feed. And honestly, I never got the results there that I wanted. So I just made the decision a few years ago to stop trying to be visible everywhere all the time and to go and start to, to really look at the places where the types of interactions that I wanted to have happen could happen. Now, there are a lot of folks that I work with who are artists, authors, musicians, um, creative people, and there are some entrepreneurs that are doing things like online courses and, I don't know, just digital products in general. And one of the things that they have to do is they have to get out there and, you know, and, and reach a lot of people in order for their sales to be sustainable, you know, in order for the sales to sustain their business. I get that. And I understand that you need to, you know, you need to be visible to a much wider group of people. So the group idea probably isn't going to be enough to make that happen. So the question then becomes, where is the place that you can reach the most people with one message and get the, the, get the interaction that you need in order to move people into the next step? Again, we're thinking strategically here. We're not just throwing spaghetti on the wall to see what works. We're looking at, you know, is there an article that you can write for a publication that will get you in front of thousands of people and then from there, your byline can invite them to a specific post on your website or to a specific sales page or to a specific place. But what we want to think about is where can we reach the right number of, of the right people at the right time with the right message and bring them in to the next step that we're inviting them to. So the group may or may not work for you like it's worked for me. I'm not going to promise that it will work. Like I said, your business has a fingerprint, not a blueprint, right? We're learning how to do business your way. And one of the things that that requires is for you to try to find those places where you have the, have the greatest impact with the least amount of effort, right? So that's what's on my mind today. If you have any questions about this, or if you're really struggling to find your people, let's have a call because I, ha I have a feeling that it may be easier than you think to find places where your people are spending their time and paying attention, right? And what we've really got to look at is how can you be present there in a way that invites them into what you're doing? That's what we're looking for. So that's all for the coffee break today. I'm excited to be to be back with you again tomorrow with another coffee break. Always, always, always thank you for spending your commodities of time and attention with a guy like me. And I'll be back again tomorrow. So long.